Okay, in this tutorial we're going to look at not only the chip, but how to dynamically add and remove items. So, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to add our functions. We're going to have init state. Personally, I like putting this above. It's just personal preference. That way, as soon as I look at the class, I know exactly what's going on in the state. And we're going to make an on clicked along with a new item function. And let's make a remove item function too. Now this is going to be a little bit of a longer video compared to the last one, so mistakes will be made. Just bear that in mind. Okay, what we need to do next is let's make a counter. Let's make our list and let's go ahead and flesh out in its state. And in this loop, we're just going to make some new items here. Let's go ahead and add this to our list. So our initial state, we're just going to create some items and add that to our list. Because this is an init state, we don't have to do a set state. Now we have an on clicked new item and remove item. Let's go ahead and flesh out the on click real quick here. The premise here being that uh, we're going to have a floating action button and when it's clicked we're going to actually add a new item. And in here we're going to say Now we've called this new item a few times, so let's go ahead and fill that out so we can see exactly what's going on inside of new item. And here we want to make an actual key, so we're going to say item underscore and the ID for that. Now we want to make a container. And we're going to return that. Now we just need to fill in the properties of this container. So we're going to say key and we're going to give it the key. If you're wondering what a key is, it allows us to reference that object. Um, so think of a key kind of like as an identifier. The reason why you would need a key is you have a child widget tree and you need to be able to access certain things within that child widget tree. In this case, we're going to access the container. For the child, we're going to say new chip. And let's break this down because this is where a lot of our work is going to be. And we want our text to be All 
right, so we've got our label. Let's do a delete icon color because we want to actually have a delete icon on the chip. Let's make it red. Let's have a delete button tooltip message. Uh, this member from our last tutorial tooltip is just a graphical on screen display. And we want to call the on deleted function here. We're just going to route that over to the remove item. And we want to give reference to that key. That way it knows exactly what we're going to delete. You notice how the remove item takes a key property. And here we're passing the key. So that's the reference right there. Now, the chip comes with a custom property called avatar, and this is a little bit different than something you've probably worked with before. An avatar is just simply like a, think of it like a thumbnail image. So we're gonna make a new circular avatar, and in here, we're gonna add a couple properties here. We're gonna say background color, and we want the colors.gray. And we want a specific shade. So let's do shade 800. And child, we just want a new text in here. And in here, we're just going to say I dot two string. All right, so I realize this function is a little bit action packed. Now let's break it down a little bit. In the new item, basically, we're just going to create a key, create a container. That container, we're going to link the key. And then we simply have a child. That child is a chip. And in the on delete function, we're also referencing that key. Remember, a key is just a reference. So because we've created a key and we've said this child, this container now has that key, it will always use that reference. So when we call this, we're actually referencing this specific container. All right. A lot of typing. Let's go ahead and go to the remove item. Let's go list dot length. All right, so we're just going to go through here and remove the item. So we're going to say widget child equal element at and we want it at the actual index and then we're just going to say if the child's key is equal to the key then of course we're going to just remove that so we're going to say set state And in here, we're just going to remove it from our internal list. And we're just going to print out a little message showing that we have deleted that key or actually that actual child, but the key is referencing it. Okay, now comes the actual fun part where we get to build all this together here. Let's go in here. We're gonna make a new floating action button and that floating action button, we want the on press to be our on clicked. And for a child, let's say, new icon we want the add and then in our body this is where things are going to get a little interesting here we've got our center we've got our column and then for children we're going to actually wipe this out because you see how it's just a list of widgets 
we're going to replace that with our list, which is, of course, just a list of widgets. Let's go ahead and do a full restart on our application. And you can see now we have our chips. I realize that was a lot of typing and you had very little feedback on what we we're actually doing. So let's go over this a little bit. This is a chip. This is the circle avatar and that is the delete icon. You can see we have five items here and if we click plus, we get some. Now there's a bit of a problem. See those zeros? We didn't increment something. So let's go back in here and figure that out. So in our new item, let's see what's going on here. Hmm. If we look at this, we can see that it's this circular avatar that gives us a little hint as to what we did wrong here. So let's look at circular avatar. Why is it saying I2 string? Probably because we forgot to increment something. Let's go ahead and increment that. Let's fully reload it because it looks like hot reloading had an issue. And let's start that over. Now works as expected. Let's go ahead and click this little delete icon. And as you can see, we can go in and delete specific items if we want to. And we can add them back in. Because we're using the counter, the number is just going to keep going and going and going. So that is a good representation of how to work with not just the chip, this little graphical guy here, but also how to work with keys and adding or removing child widgets.